Hi everyone, this is a short video regarding installation of a 2 node drawbook hyperflex cluster from Indersight. I have my two nodes and Indersight logged in here. I have launched the KVM as well just in case we need to see things. The first thing which needs to be done here is we need to claim our devices in Indersight. So you log into your SimSees, go to admin device connector and from here uh, the device connector should be enabled the settings have the option to toggle the device connector option we need to make sure that allow control is uh, selected under access mode you need to have DNS NTP setup the CIMCs should talk to internet in case they cannot directly reach internet you can enable proxy mention proxy hostname ip and the proxy port number in my case the devices have direct access to internet so i will directly claim these devices on intersight in intersight under devices claim a device option will let you claim your hyperflex nodes on intersight I will start with device ID and claim code from one of the two devices and put them in inside to claim these. A successfully claimed device will be seen here under devices as connected, show you the serial number and the CCO ID of who has claimed it. Once you have claimed both your nodes on inside, they will show the name of the node, their status, IP addresses, serial numbers and as I mentioned the person's uh, ID who has claimed it. After successfully claiming both your nodes, the next step which has to happen is we have to create a Hyperflex cluster profile so that we can start the deployment of the cluster. Under policy, uh, under profiles, you Click on create hyperflex cluster profile which has primarily six steps to configure the cluster. You will notice that most of the steps are very similar to a traditional on-prem inst installer. Uh, uh, so the steps are the same it is just that they have been divided amongst these six steps on Intersight. You can leave the organization as default. I will give it a name as two node robo we need uh, I, I would select 4.02a the latest hyperflex data uh, platform version this is a hyperflex edge cluster so i will let it remain as it is i prefer to give it a description mentioning that this is a two node robo when I click on next, the uh, next thing which uh, it will ask is the complete cluster config. The first, the first uh, section of the cluster configuration is security where we need to key in the hypervisor ESXi uh, and so hypervisor ESXi password which we need and the controller VM password. Once we have keyed in these details, the next thing which you need to specify is the DNS NTP and the time zone config. vCenter is optional. You can even register the cluster after deployment. Storage configuration is something which is optional again. In case you need to optimize your cluster for VDI deployment, you can check this option. Uh, Clean disk partition is an option which will uh, run clear part table on the disks uh, which are there associated with your nodes. Uh, this is not needed as of now. Auto support is again optional. IP and hostname information will specifically ask you for information related to the management network of both your ES. Uh, Yes, both your hypervisor and your controller VM. Note that 
this IP and hostname section only needs your management IP details. From here, the network configuration will ask you whether this needs to be a 1 gig Hyperflex cluster or the 10 gig one. So this is basically uh, the demarcation which you have based on what uh, selection you have made while purchasing these nodes. 1 gig Hyperflex Edge cluster does not need WIC cards. It can be deployed using the uh, 1 gig uh, ports which are available from the LOM ports or uh, the PCI uh, PCI card on the LOM, the MLOM port. It, it all depends upon what kind of config you're using. There are three possible uh, network configurations available. First will be single switch 1 gig, the second will, will be two switch, dual switch 1 gig, and the third option will be a 10 gig network config. I will be choosing 10 gig Hyperflex edge cluster config because I specifically have my nodes configured with MLOM for uh, the deployment. So these are the 1387 cards which I am using for my deployment. Both of them should have the same type of config. Both third and fourth generation adapters are supported. Once you have keyed in the uh, type of config which you need and the and specified the management network VLAN. The next step again proxy settings is optional. You though have to specify the Hyperflex storage network VLAN ID only. So Hyperflex storage network has been segregated into a separate section which just needs the VLAN ID. The ESXi storage uh, interfaces and the storage controller VM interfaces specifically the VMK ones and the ETH ones on your hypervisor and controller VM respectively will be given an IP from the private range the APIP 169 network uh, directly by Intersight as it happens in a traditional edge cluster. Once you have keyed in all the step, all the sections of the cluster configuration uh, part, you will see green. You will see uh, all these uh, options successfully selected, and you will also notice that these have been configured as specific policies with the description which I had created initially. The next step or the third step here is node assignment. We will be selecting both our nodes which are already claimed. Click on next. The fourth option now will take us to the node configuration option. So if you check at the so this section IP and hostname is something which is already specified we need to specify the cluster management IP address so in the node configuration section when you have specified the cluster management IP address you will come on to the fifth step of this cluster uh, profile which is the summary tab here there will be errors warnings listed these warnings specifically talk about the edge deployment which has a replication factor of 2. I have not configured a vCenter and that is why the policy mentions that it's not configured and you can very well register the cluster post vCenter installation or simply once the cluster is deployed. As this cluster only has two nodes, uh, inter-site connectivity is always needed so that a node failure can be tolerable and that is the third and the final warning. Once that is done we will choose the option validate and deploy so that we can start the cluster creation.